Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another reading for you guys. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys that have been following me for a while now, welcome back my lovelies. Before we get into your reading, I do want to let you guys know if you guys are interested in any of the decks that I do readings on, you can definitely find the link on the description box below. Uh, make sure to enter the promo code Pinky Pink Star and you will be able to receive 20% discount. You'll find all that information in the description box below. We're gonna be using the reading, uh, sorry, we're gonna be using the tarot, uh, tarot of the Nile, as you guys can see here, Egyptian theme, very beautiful cards, beautiful depictions. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing the readings on. Now, so like I said, if you guys are interested, you'll find all that information on the description box below. Um, I do want to apologize. I know that we have been a bit behind on our readings as well as uh, the uh, Tarot Lessons 101. Uh, for those of you guys that I'm pretty sure if you live um, if you live here on the earthly plane, uh, you guys have been hearing a lot of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, it's taken a lot um, on my part. At, in, on a personal aspect. Um, I am all about women's rights and uh, equality. And I think that it is a sad time in our, uh, in the world that we're living in right now. Um, a lot of backtracking, a lot of wanting to revisit the past or go back to the past. Um, and just trying to be enforced upon us as the collective, uh, the words that I want to share with you guys at this point in time, it is to not feel helpless, to not feel like you're not in control. Um, stay in your power. Be clear and concise about what you want and stand behind your convictions. Um, there is a portal that we're currently experiencing, the opening of a portal. And there is a lot of desire to bring everyone's energy and vibration um, low. And the best advice I can tell you, again, uh, connect, meditate, be clear, and don't give up your power. Stand in your power. Uh, for all my beautiful women out there, it is the goddess that is calling upon us to awaken our power, to awaken and remember who we are and the power that we possess. So without further ado, let's get into your readings. Let's see what you can expect in the next coming weeks. We're going to start off here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us guidance. Understanding wisdom and knowledge. What are the messages for Aries? What can Aries expect for the next coming weeks? I have been raging, you guys. I've been raging. I've been doing a lot of chaotic spell work for clients. Um, and they're getting very quick results. Um, yeah, it's it's been very difficult to process everything that's going on. And the constant desire to keep women down is something that has been experienced throughout centuries um, because we are power so stand in that power and defend what is ours our rights all right aries sun moon rising venus let's see what we can expect all right, so we're starting off here with the Seven of Pentacles, the King of Cups, Queen of Cups, Knight of Cups, Page of Cups. Wow, love is in the horizon for you, Aries. Now, for those of you guys that um, are currently dealing with the situation of revisiting the past or being a bit, um, I don't want to say pessimistic, but it's almost a feeling of wanting to see the results of the hard work and labor you've been putting into your love life. Now, this could be from previous relationships, uh, the hard work and determination that you've put on relationships, 
or the effort in relationships and the wanting to fuel your or fill your cup. Um, I do see the king and queen here of cups and it is the yin and the yang. This is the masculine and feminine energy regardless of your sexuality. And there is definitely love around you, Aries, but I want to evoke the message for you at this point in time, it is important and crucial to stop reminiscing about the past or reliving the past. Whatever was done in the past has been done and it's time to move on. Uh, like I said, a lot of the times it's okay to reminisce or to think about the past, but don't stay in that energy um, because it's almost a feeling of wanting to revisit the best time uh, or the happy moments in your life. It's almost the feeling of that was like looking back, that was the best time of my life or that's when I was feeling happy and fulfilled. Um, and what they're telling you is, again, you're really staying in that energy and it is important right now because love is around you. It is important to embrace the new chapter, the new beginning, uh, the new cycle in your life. And I do see offerings coming in for you. For some of you guys, I do see a connection or some type of romantic um, romantic beginning. And for some of you guys, it could be with a coworker, could be with someone that you work with or someone that is new coming into your workplace. Uh, there's going to be an immediate connection there. Um, now, for those of you guys that are, uh, currently seeking relationships or partnerships or you're open to dating, it is important to expand and date outside of your circle. So what I mean by that, don't necessarily try to um, deal with people that are very local to you or perhaps like in your neighborhood. It's time to expand. It's time, it's time to go out uh, or to go to a, to try, to try a different social setting other than what you're usually accustomed to. Um, it's about expanding your wings and expanding your circle. So again, go to the, you know, a different bar, a different restaurant, that type of energy, because I do see that for uh, the coming months, uh, love is going to be around you and opportunities, um, for love and a new beginning in love is, uh, definitely very, very highlighted here. Okay. All right. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus going on with Taurus Sun Moon Rising Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus Sun Moon Rising Venus. What is unfolding for them in the next coming weeks? Okay, here we go. All right, Taurus, we're starting off here with the Three of Cups, Two of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Five, sorry, Seven of Cups, Interesting. Hmm. All right. So there is. Okay, so I mean, I'm getting multiple messages for you guys. Now, for some of you, it's time to turn the page. It's time to let go of the past and completely let go of the past. And with letting go of the past, this includes letting uh, the fears of what's been holding you back. It's almost like there is this frustration of no momentum or no new movement, especially in regards to love. But at the same time, it's like your energy is being pulled towards different directions. This could be finances. This could be family. This could be relatives. This could be your kids. It's almost the wanting to embark on something exciting, something uh, for those of you, maybe a non-existent romantic life. A desire to see some type of change here and I definitely see change coming towards you but what they're saying is what is done is done it's in the past let it go and move on from that uh, stop reliving something that is constant that is very linked or connected to your past it is time to embark on this new beginning this new cycle and with it I highly encourage you guys to expand your inner circle whether you're a low lonesome a lone wolf the type that doesn't really have a lot of friends or a major group or a big group or whatever it's time for you to make it a mission of yours to be social for uh, this summer 
And the reason for it is because that's going to be the key and the opening of a door of a new cycle in your love life. Uh, yes, business and career is going to be uh, doing well for you. Um, but I don't want you to be completely wrapped up into your um, career, your finances or your business or your daily grind. You know, if you have a routine and it's something that is constant and something that you know exactly what it is that you're going to cook for dinner on Monday night or you know exactly what you're going to do on Sunday night, uh, stuff like that. It's time to shake it up is what they're telling you. It's time for you to expand your wings um, and embrace a, a, a bigger circle or a bigger social circle, because that's going to bring to you a lot of opportunities when we're talking about love and romance and where you found that there was a bit of, like I said, non-existent or not movement in regards to your love and romance. That's quickly going to turn around, but it's going to take effort on your part to put yourself out there. So my lovelies, it is about you're able to connect, you're able to meet new people and this is through different means other than what you're accustomed to so right now is the time to get yourself on social network sorry social media uh, dating apps things like that because that's going to bring to you yes many opportunities here but there is a solid connection that's coming in that may turn into something long term but again like i said it's going to take for you to put that effort, for you to make that happen. So again, my advice is now is the time put, to put yourselves out there. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the Two of Wands, the Ace of Wands, the Tower. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So there is, okay, we're going to take it step by step, Gemini, because I'm getting multitude of messages for you guys. What I'm hearing is there is an aspect in your life where you thought things were solid or where you thought um, that everything was going the way you wanted it to go, there's going to be a shakeup. There's going to be something, some type of revelation um, in regards to family or connection with family that has something to do or ties with some type of finances here. Now, for some of you guys, it could be something that was rightfully yours, that was taken from you. For others of you, it could be something that was, again, rightfully yours, but was taken from you through some type of sneakiness or some type of um, not being completely honest or transparent about a situation. It's almost like I see you guys handing out or helping someone out um, without having the full understanding of what was going on. And it's almost the feeling like, okay, now it's time for me to back the fuck up. Now it's time for me to pull my energy back and allow them to figure it out on their own because I'm no longer assisting or I'm no longer helping. But the reason why you're putting a stop to it is because there is a feeling of disrespect or there is a feeling of I'm no longer going to take their shit, right? And it's almost like a feeling of them guilt tripping you or making you feel like you had to be there, you had to help them, you had to, something that they were relying on you about. And it's like, you're finally to the point of, I'm done. I'm no longer gonna hold to, to this because I'm toxic by allowing you to be toxic in my life. It's taking self-responsibility and pulling yourself completely away from chaos or destruction. And I feel that this has a lot to do or in connection with family or people relying on you. And it's like the moment you're able to pull away from that, the moment you're able to stop allowing people to create drama in your life is the moment that things start to become more solid. That's if you're not already experiencing that, Gemini, and you feel like a bit reclusive because you're starting to see more stability or more peace and harmony without dealing with so many people or without dealing with those specific toxic people. 
So the advice for you guys um, here right now is whatever connections or relationships are breaking or the ties are kind of, you know, there's some type of distancing involved. Don't try to hold on to those relationships. Don't try to uh, fix it. At this point, whatever needs to break, whatever needs to rip, let that shit rip and let it rip from the root. Why? Because a lot of these connections are toxic or to toxic to your life and they've kept you like down, metaphorically speaking, um, because it's almost like they're always constantly dragging you, but I feel like it has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with their choosing of being chaotic and creating and steering up drama. So stay away from that. Um, I feel like there is a lot of revelations happening with you guys. So don't be surprised if you find out that the person you trusted uh, has been speaking behind your back or has been doing shit that they weren't supposed to be doing uh, when they were trying to tell you a different story. Okay, just like I said, whatever needs to break, let it go right now, Gemini. All right, let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancers for the next coming weeks. What can Cancer expect? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Cancer, we have King of Swords, the Fool, Knight of Wands, Two of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, and the Eight of Swords. Okay, so there is... There's definitely some type of resistance that you've been dealing with or going through uh, cancer. I feel like you've been very much in your head about something. There's this desire to want to take on a new endeavor or take on a new opportunity or perhaps make a decision um, that you're really excited about. There's a desire of wanting to stabilize something. And for some of you guys, because we do have here the Two of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. It's been something long in the making for you guys. I feel like there is a lot of imbalance in your life right now. And you're wanting to stabilize. For some of you guys, it could be wanting to stabilize your finances. For others of you guys, wanting to stabilize something in your life right now. Where there's been, it's become a bit of a challenge for some of you. And what they're telling you is you need to work on shifting your way of thinking. Because your way of thinking has often a lot to do with the consequences or what tends to unfold in your life where you feel or it puts you in a position of feeling helpless or feeling like you're not in control of your own life. Um, so for some of you guys, this could be, as an example, relationships. If there is a desire for you to stabilize some type of relationship, but you're carrying the fear or the doubt that they might leave you high and dry or that it's not going to go nowhere or that it's going to come to some type of quick and abrupt ending. In essence, you're you're vibrating from that fear, from that frequency of, of, of doubt. So what's going to happen is it will unfold that way because you've already accepted that that's your destiny. So what they're telling you here, Cancer, is that you're not seeing your true potential or your true power because you're often doubting yourself and you're doubting yourself based on your past experiences or the experiences of those around you. So as an example, if we're talking about finances, if you look around you and there's been this constant struggle of finding some type of stability in your life when we're talking about finances and career, um, but then you see around you, everyone around you has a tendency of living a, a life where the are constantly on the daily grind because it's almost like there's lack of and you're seeing all this being reflected to you it's like if they are struggling then that means i'm struggling or if you were raised a certain way growing up to have that mentality as an example um this is something that i constantly see with with clients right where if you've grown up in a very difficult environment where we're talking about finances and there's been lack of stability, as a child, you grow up with this fear of not having enough food or not having enough uh, clothes or not having enough of whatever your necessities are. When you grow, you grow with that ingrained in you. So what happens is that you become very frugal with your money or very frugal with when you see food 
or when you go out to a restaurant and there's like a, a little bit of the food left, but you still ask for a doggy back because there's like this fear of not having enough. And it's not that you're doing it on a conscious level. You're doing this on a very subconscious level. It's ingrained in your mind. If you constantly vibrate from that fear, then your future and what is unfolding in your future is going to continuously keep giving you situations and circumstances that make you feel like you don't have enough. So you have to get out of that mentality. My advice would be do meditation, do guided meditation. You guys can find guided meditations on here on YouTube that are going to help you surrender and release those past traumas or, their, or those fears. Like I said, it doesn't have to be with finances. It doesn't have to be with, um, you know, it could be with love. It could be in any aspect of your life. There is a feeling of helplessness or feeling like you're constantly feeling you're not in control. And if you're constantly feeling that way, then guess what? You're vibrating to that. Therefore, the universe is going to give you situations that make you feel exactly that, like you're not in control. So you need to cut this pattern and let go of this. Only through that will you be able to start to experience the abundance that is all around you. All right, my lovelies. Powerful message for you guys. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go now to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we got cards flying out. All right, so we have the Queen of Swords here. I see you guys um, really much in your head thinking, trying to analyze. Let's see what you guys are analyzing about. All right, here we go. All right, so there is this feeling of being blocked or this feeling of being challenged right now, Leo. There's almost like this feeling of resistance. I, I see you guys almost like going up the mountain and at this point there's this mentality or this thinking of I'm at the top or halfway to the top, why do I constantly feel like I'm going up the mountain? Like there's resistance there. There's something that is pulling or creating some type of resistance. And what they're showing me here is, again, it's because you're too much in your head. There is an overthinking or there is this feeling of not being able to experience exactly the type of opportunities or perhaps the type of the type of opportunities or the type of it, it, it's it's this feeling of frustration i feel really frustrated you guys it's like it's like you're seeing or you're experiencing a lot of resistance in every single aspect of your life right now you're being challenged but in that challenge there's also this peacefulness in it that it's almost like a little voice in you saying now is the time to really step up now is the time to really go after what you want to happen now is the time to put in the work now is the time to believe in yourself so there is something that you guys are right now at this point in time there's something that you guys are struggling with that has a lot to do with trust has a lot to do with faith and has a lot to do with timing so if right now you're experiencing a delay in something, whether it's a proceeding, whether it's something to do with your career, with your finances, whether it's in relationships, whatever it is that you're currently feeling like there isn't much momentum, there is more of obstacles in your way, know and understand that the obstacles that are in your way right now, there's a purpose behind them. And that purpose is to make your mind stronger than your heart so that you can overcome that. So what do I mean with your mind being stronger than your heart? A lot of the times, and by the way, it takes mastery to be able to master your mind over your heart. And a lot of the times, you know, people say metaphorically speaking, follow your heart. That's when that's what's going to take you or guide you to your happiness, to your passion, which is absolutely true. But oftentimes, when you make decisions based on emotion, oftentimes in the human experience, emotion is something temporary because you could be happy right now and then someone shits on your day and then it completely turns your day around where it makes you feel frustrated, it makes you feel 
you know, whatever, because emotions are temporary. It's constantly changing. So if you make decisions based on emotion, which are temporary, you often find yourself making major mistakes, right? You regret those decisions. But when you make decisions with a clear mind, with a clear head and cool and collected, that's when you make your best decisions. Why? Because you're using, you're using logic versus using emotion. So what they're telling you right now is don't get emotional. Don't get wrapped up if right now you're going through, you know, a bit of obstacles or you're being challenged right now or there's a feeling of like things are just not going my way. Take a deep breath and understand that there is a reason for this. Now, we can run to our, you know, to our ultimate goal or what we want to make happen. But if we're able to run without any resistance, will you appreciate that when you have it? Probably not, because what comes easy goes easy. So what they're telling you here is it is important to be in control of your emotions and to stay focused, to train your mind to be patient and trust the universe in due time. If you're going through obstacles or something is slowing you down right now, Take it as a blessing because when they are guiding you to take step by step instead of running towards something, it means that it's going to be much more consistent. It's going to be something that is going to be more long lasting and it's something that is going to be solid because you're taking solid steps. So whatever it is that you're currently struggling with or going through right now, Leo, just remember it is important to trust in yourself and trust in the universe and trust in timing. Whatever your faith is, hold on to that faith and you're going to be rewarded. You're definitely going to be rewarded. But again, it's about teaching your mind to be stronger, to see the ultimate desire or the ultimate goal and to focus on that regardless of what you're currently going through, regardless of the struggles right now, because you will overcome them. Now, if you wrap up yourself in emotion, you're going to be an emotional roller coaster frustrated, feeling like you're not in control, feeling pissed, maybe even annoyed, a bit agitated. All of these emotions that, like I said, if you think about it on the grander scale of things, they're temporary. So whatever it is that you're waiting for as an outcome, it is coming to you, but you have to trust this process and be patient with yourself and with the universe. Okay, my lovelies. All right, now we're going to go to Virgo. Let me have a sip of my coffee because it's been a long day, you guys. Very long day. All right, here we go. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How are you guys doing, by the way? How are you guys feeling? We are, it almost feels like it's a constant um, struggle, kind of like Leo's reigning. <laughs> we are being challenged on so many levels, you guys. Um, you know, people really didn't take seriously when I said uh, the last lunar eclipse that we experienced um, with the Scorpio one. That was a major one. And people didn't really believe that it was going to affect us for the next six months. Um, and it's, you know, pretty much on point. And the fact that we have Saturn in retrograde, a, a lot of things being shaken up to the core, you know, that speak to our values, that speaks to our everyday, what we're accustomed to and what needs to change and, and taking self-responsibility. And if you don't, things are going to get, you know, worse before they get better. Uh, so yeah, definitely people are going through it. So if you're going through it, be patient. Okay. All right, let's get into it. Virgo. What do we have here? We have the five of cups. We have the star card, knight of cups. There is something that you're hoping for or that you're wishing for it to turn into something stable. For some of you guys, it could be that you recently started a new endeavor. Uh, for some of you guys, you could have started a new job or there's some type of move that's happening here. And though you may see it as resistance or you may see it as a challenge, uh, what Spirit is telling you is 
You have to learn to believe in yourself, Virgo. You need to be more confident in the decisions that you make. Because what I'm hearing is like, I hear you saying yes to something, but quickly backtracking or doubting yourself. Did I make the right decision? Was this the right timing? Was this the right thing to do? So there is this constant inner struggle within you of doubting the decisions you've made or you're making. And what Spirit is telling you is you need to be more in tune with yourself. Always go with your gut feeling. Make decisions with a clear mind, but also own those decisions, okay? Whether the outcome is good or bad, except that at that point in your life, you felt like that was the best decision you could have made, regardless. A lot of the times, like I said, I feel like you quickly backtrack or there's this feeling of I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. And when you do that, essentially what you're doing is you are doubting yourself and you're making yourself feel like you're incapable of making decisions. So the next time a decision comes around, you're very much in your head about it because you have grown accustomed to not owning those decisions that you make. Now, I do see a bit of frustration for some of you guys. It could be that you're having a lot of, you know, a bit of struggle, a bit of strife with family, friends, loved ones. This could be relationships as well that are being challenged right now. But again, I feel that the positive in this is it's being challenged because the outcome or the end result is to stabilize or to strengthen those connections, but also coming to the realization of those relationships that no longer work for you, those people that are toxic in your life or, you know, the relative that pretends to be your friend and pretends to love you because you're family, but every time they see you, they're like, oh, I can see that you've been, you know, feeding yourself pretty good, like making a comment about your weight. Or I can tell that, you know, you need some sleep. Like It's like backhanded comments. And what they're telling you here is don't allow people to disrespect you in that way. If someone's presence and after you've conversated with them or after you've had a conversation, they leave you feeling depleted or they feel they leave you feeling unwelcomed or like did this person really disrespect me the like like what the fuck just happened what they're telling you is you need to learn to speak up and there is a way of going about it you don't have to be disrespectful about it virgo as an example if someone gives you a backhanded comment um you don't have to be disrespectful you could just you know hey i didn't know that i you know that i made you comfortable enough to feel like you have a space to be disrespectful to me or if they make a comment that in your head you're thinking, I can't believe they just said that out loud, repeat the comment to them. Make them feel uncomfortable. Make them feel stupid for what they just said. And to let those in the back hear it louder. You know what I'm saying? So there's ways of, of, of people that are manipulative or people that are spiteful. Um, there's ways of dealing with them. And sometimes we have to rely on being manipulative ourselves to put them in their place or other ways is, you know, taking the high road, but also letting them know that you're not the one to be fucked with. And the best way of doing that is by making them feel stupid because most of the time people that are disrespectful or people that like to push other people's boundaries, believe it or not, have it, ha have a habit of not being put in their place. Like people don't question them. Oftentimes people will laugh. You know, if, if they've been disrespectful to you, people will laugh or, or because it's uncomfortable laugh. It's it's the the laugh they're trying to break that uncomfortability. But hey, this is the way I see it. If they're being disrespectful to you or they're making you feel uncomfortable and they're the ones making those comments, you have every freaking right to make them feel stupid, to put them in their place. Nine out of 10 times, they're not used to that and they themselves will not know how to come back from that. And they'll know next time to be more to be more logical and to be more mindful of the stupidity that comes out through their mouth, okay? So, stand in your power, Virgo. All right. 
Now let's go to Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. What can we expect for the next coming weeks for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Here we go. Okay, we have, ooh, interesting. Very, okay. All right, so what I'm seeing here is for some of you Libras, there's been something you've been debating regarding a relationship or some type of connection. There is this feeling of emptying up your cup and getting to the point of it being completely empty. And it's like, I'm frustrated. Do I walk away from this? Do I keep embracing this? Doubting yourself back and forth about a connection that is going nowhere. Stop wasting your time, Libra. Why? Because the nine of swords here is indicating to me it's like there is this feeling of being stuck, frustration that you can't come together or that you can't figure it out or that you guys can't get on the same page, right? And it's been something long in the making and what they're telling you here at this point in time, you're the only one that is sacrificing or you're the only one that is literally torturing yourself with this situation and the only one that can change the outcome is yourself you're at crossroads right now the lover's card is a symbolization of being at crossroads crossroads sorry there's a decision that you need to make and it's a decision that is a hard decision it's not something that you want to take very lightly but if you've been dealing with inconsistency in this connection or in this relationship and things are not changing, babe, they're not going to change. You need to keep it pushing. The moment you're able to release yourself from this, the moment you are able to no longer doubt what you deserve and what is rightfully yours, meaning if there is a desire to stabilize for, for some type of commitment, some type of long-term connection or relationship, if that's something that you truly want, it means you've already experienced that in a different timeline. That's why your soul recognizes it as a desire, something that your heart and your soul truly wants. If, if that wasn't meant for you, if that wasn't in your cards, literally, your mind would have no concept of that desire. So stop doubting this. If it's not working out where you're at right now, it's not going to work out. It doesn't mean that it's not for you. It just means that with this person, it's not going to work out. Now, the moment you're able to make that decision and release yourself from the fear of I'm going to hold on because what if they change their mind or I'm going to hold on because what if they do better themselves or I'm going to hold on because maybe they will want commitment long term some down, somewhere down the line. If they haven't wanted that for the past two years, they're not going to want that. They've already made up their mind about this connection. But the moment you make the decision for yourself, you have the Hierophant here and the Emperor card. What does this mean? Well, they're talking to you about commitment. They're talking to you about structure. There is a structured relationship, a structured partnership, or a connection that is coming towards you, that is meant for you, that is going to bring you emotional fulfillment. But in order for you to be able to experience this in this timeline, you need to let go of what is no longer serving you. Now, for some of you guys, because we do have here past energy, if you're, if you're being in a relationship right now because it's comfortable for you or because you feel like it's, you've put a lot of effort up until now, but you're still Con con uh, continuously reliving something about the past, you need to work that past out before you're able to nurture or grow a new garden, a new plant, metaphorically speaking. You can't jump from one relationship to another and expect that it's going to pan out. Why? Because when we carry baggage from previous relationships that are unresolved baggages, you're not wholeheartedly in the connection. 
So you, therefore, you cannot blame the other person for it not working out because part of it has a lot to do with you choosing them. And you chose them because there is a part of you that is still needing to be healed or that is still broken. That was, which is why you're in that vibration, which is why it led you to the relationship you're in right now. The one you're holding on to for dear life or the one that you're hoping is going to turn into something long term. But essentially what you're doing is you're settling. And what they're telling you here is do not settle because you do have love around you. You do have your lifetime partner or the person you're meant to marry or the person you're meant to share the rest of your life with. But it's not about settling right now. It's about working on yourself, loving yourself enough to walk away from something where there's disrespect, where there's inconsistency, and where there's lack of foundation. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? All right, here we go. Hmm. All right, Scorpio, what I'm seeing here is for a lot of you guys, there is a feeling of trying to be overly protected or like very protective of your home, of your family or of your relationship. And there's this fear of like other people playing a part or influencing the stability. Now the stability could be a representation of your partner. It could be a representation of the family dynamic. It could be the representation of the home itself. But there's almost like this desire of wanting to achieve or getting to a point of contentment or of building something. For some of you guys, this could be trying to build a solid relationship um, when what you have is a half-assed relationship. For others of you, it could be that you're trying to portray your relationship as something very solid. Um like I said, when it's broken and you want to sweep things under the rug and show to the world that everything is amazing and that we're stable when clearly there's issues that we need to address type of energy. There is this feeling of someone in this connection or in this relationship is putting a lot of work. It could be literal, like putting a lot of long hours at work for others of you, it could be that they are carrying the relationship. There is this feeling of, I'm so frustrated because my life is difficult. But at the same time, it's not as difficult or as much as what your partner is carrying or the effort they're putting. Keep in mind, it is a general reading, so it could be vice versa, you guys. But what they're saying here is someone that is not carrying the relationship or that is being very carefree. It's like the other person is growing tired of it. And what I'm hearing is like they're growing tired of your bullshit or you're growing tired of their bullshit. It's like you're wanting more. You're wanting them to pick up the slack or vice versa. Like I said, it's a general reading. But there is this like, oh, let you know, you tell family, friends, everyone that, you know, everything is great. But someone in this connection or in this relationship is being a bit unhappy or frustrated. And it's time to address it. Why? Because I do see temptation and I do see a third party type of energy being around the situation. So what I'm saying is if there's lack of sexuality in this connection, now is the time to step it up. Because someone's getting tired of looking or going or searching or trying to get you uh, to be a little bit more physical. If this is you, then it's, if this is you, the one that usually chasing your partner or trying to be intimate with your partner, um, there is this frustration, like I'm done with it. I'm no longer going to put effort. I'm no longer, but I see the, the, the frustration, like it's been something long in the making. So again, 
there is something that you guys are not addressing. It doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't have to be physical. For some of you guys, it could be that you just cannot rely on your partner emotional wise. Um, and there's this feeling of like doing shit on the side. Or I need to get away from this situation because I need a breather. Or I need to go out with my friends and have a guy's night out because I deserve it. But in reality, it's like you guys are trying the best you can to minimize the amount of time you guys share with each other. But the reason, again, is because someone is not like you guys are not addressing the issues. To the point of like not being comfortable around each other. And like I said, if you're married or if you're in a long term committed relationship and you live with your partner, if you guys are going like on a dry spell for a while, like it's time to put effort. You guys have to keep in mind that when it comes to relationships and partnerships, it's not just the women or it's not just the man. Or if you're in the same sex, it's not just your partner, the one that has to put effort in a relationship. It takes two people and it takes work and effort and dedication to maintain that flame. And if you guys are just growing accustomed to it, you're doing a disservice to one another because when something along comes around and it is exciting, people get tempted. All right. All right. Do with that with you will. Y'all need to stay on. The <laughs> All right, let's go. I'll keep the comments to myself because I'm hearing a multitude of things, you guys. All right, here we go. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. Oof, 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 oof. All right. Sagittarius, I see you guys putting an end to some relationship or some connection. For some of you guys, I see you guys making the decision of walking away from a relationship that is not fulfilling you any longer or that is not maintaining your happiness anymore. It's like the time of sacrificing yourself or sacrificing your happiness has come to an end and you are being unapologetic about it because to be honest, the moment if right now, if you're listening to me right now, Sagittarius, and you're in a relationship and it's an unhappy relationship and you're doubting or you're trying to figure out, should I walk away? Should I keep putting effort? There's this debate going on in your head. Just know that the moment you make the decision you're going to be completely done. And there's like, you're not going to turn back. And that's the type of certainty that when you get to that point mentally, like there's no turning back. I feel like you've sacrificed a lot in relationships or in partnerships. For some of you guys, it could be that you tried to maintain this connection out of some type of self-responsibility. For others of you, it could be like responsibility in the aspect of People are relying on you or family or your kids, etc. It's like you've made up a thousand reasons why you should not walk away. But at this point, I see you mentally exhausted and you're done. Like I said, if you're debating, you will get to the point of making the decision and not looking back. And I feel like it's been long in the making. Now, for others of you, I see you guys dealing with a situation that was probably because it was comfortable for you, but Coming into the month of July, I feel like you guys are empowered and you're, like I said, I'm hearing done sacrificing yourself for other people. And it's like you are going to go after what you want. And I feel like for some of you guys, you already have your eye on someone or you dealt with someone in the past, but it's almost like something happened that was a missed opportunity. It's coming back around you guys. Now, if you felt like at some point in your life, uh, you missed an opportunity, whether it was finances, whether it was uh, to expand, whether it was love and romance, and there is this feeling of like time being restricted or not having the opportunity or not being able to, um, not being able to fully 
you know, dive into seeing where this could go or where this could lead. I feel like it was interrupted, to be honest with you, with the Page of Swords here. Um, it's coming back around. And it's like what's been unstable or what's been a challenge becomes balanced. And for a lot of you guys, it was a missed opportunity. For others of you, it could have just been a situation where um, there was, like I said, this this fear of responsibilities or people relying, etc. But it's like it's coming back around. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's something you've manifested. You have the magician card here. So it's something you've been hoping for or wishing for. For some of you guys, this could be in regards to finances. It could be a new endeavor. It could be the position you applied for like six months ago and you're just hearing from them now. For others of you, it's it's. I see you guys leaving something, going to something more stable or something more like fulfilling for you. Like I said, it could be career, it could be finances. For a lot of you guys, though, I feel like it has a lot to do with your romance. And there is a revisiting of this situation. It doesn't have to be the same person. It could just be the... The situation, the, 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 that cycle, something that happened um, a year ago. For some of you guys, it could be like a year and six months ago. There is a revisiting of that situation, but I feel like it had a lot to do with timing. And it had a lot to do with you getting out of the cycle or situation of dealing with something that was toxic. But you had to accept it. Or you had to learn the lesson to fully release it. And I feel like you guys are releasing this. You're letting go of this. You're letting go of living or suppressing your happiness to make other people happy or other or help other people or make other people feel fulfilled. It could be for some of you guys staying with the partner because they're they're battling through some type of addiction. There's some type of health issue some type of, you know, the family, the kids, there is a feeling of I'm sacrificing for the higher good. But at this point, what spirit is telling you is the higher good is learning to put yourself first. And I see you guys making that move, making that change. Powerful energy here, Sagittarius. All right. Now let's go with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Cappies. How are you guys dealing with, <laughs> with these planet alignments, Capricorn? Let me tell you guys, we've been going through it the past four months. It's been actually the whole year. <laughs> All right, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Oof. Wow. Okay. Heavy ass energy here, Capricorn. We have one, two, three, four. We have four major arcanas in a six card spread. So what this is telling me is right now the planet alignments are, are most definitely affecting you guys. The world card, you're ending a cycle, raising your vibration, but also going into the next cycle of your life with greater wisdom and a greater perspective. Why you have the world and the hanged man. You're seeing things from a very different perspective. You're becoming more self-aware. You're becoming more conscious, more awoke or awoken. And you're going towards more calmer waters, something that I feel for a lot of you guys, there's been a constant struggle. There's been a constant inner struggle. I feel like a lot of Capricorns have been dealing with the struggle of believing in yourself and what you're capable of doing, of your limiting beliefs is what I'm hearing. So limiting beliefs could mean a multitude of things for everyone. Everyone is different. Um, but what this entails is a constant battle between what you want and the feeling of are you deserving of it? Are you worthy of it? When I say constant struggle, this is an indication to me of a lot of healing that you've had to gone through, you've been going through.
for some of you guys, there is a revisiting of a past situation where there was no ending in sight. There was no conclusion. There was no farewell. Now, for some of you guys, this could have been a relationship. For others of you, this could have been a situation regarding the family or the people around you. There was an uprising, a bit of chaotic energy that surfaced where there was a lot of a lot of toxicity and a lot of healing that needed to happen. I feel that for a lot of you guys, you're being challenged because this is being mirrored through your kids, through your family. It's almost like it's giving me the vibe of being extremely close to your family and dealing with the toxicity of some of them because they're family, right? Saturn is the father figure. It is the, the wanting to maintain, um, maintain certain traditions. So it's really hard for Capricorns to walk away or to end relationships or, you know, connections with family member, friends, etc., because loyalty is something that is ingrained in Capricorns when we're talking about family. And it's like now I have kids and now I'm seeing how toxic it was for me as a kid to deal with an uncle that was extremely toxic, just as an example. And now that I have a kid and I have, you know, a brother, uh, let's just say that was toxic or something to my kid, my imaginary kid, you guys. <laughs> um, I'm realizing there were certain things that should not have happened or should not have been allowed. But, but it's like when it comes to family, like sometimes we excuse their behavior because, oh, it's family. Um, but now you're becoming more aware of this and there is this distinction of I want to structure or I want to raise or I want to do what is right. This feeling of righteousness and standing up for injustice. Um, but again, this could be in any aspect of your life. This could be in relationships. This could be the understanding. Well, in the past, I've had nothing but toxic ass boyfriends or toxic ass girlfriends. What is it about me that is attracting this about those type of people? And it's the viewing your life experience in a very different perspective where you're able to pinpoint exactly what may be triggering those behaviors. And it's like you're becoming aware of it and you're ending those cycles, healing yourself completely, healing yourself completely here with the temperance and the death card to be reborn or to be rebirthed into the higher version of yourself, Capricorn. And I'll be honest with you guys, for a lot of you guys, if there was a situation regarding, you know, a partner, a person that, of your interest that you were dealing with, it just didn't pan out. For some of you guys, they're coming back around. And the reason for it not working out then is because they themselves, just like you, needed to deal with some type of past trauma to be able to move on to the next cycle in your life. Temperance is all about healing, but it also indicates for some of you guys a Sagittarius or a Scorpio energy, uh, a Taurus energy here, Aries energy, a Leo energy, uh, Pisces energy. But the ultimate message here is you had to go through those inner struggles to be able to liberate and free yourself from what ties you. And that which ties you is what's been frustrating you all this time. So you haven't, as an example, if you were holding on to some anger, or some type of animosity from someone, a relative, a family member, you're being able to release that, but you're releasing it and forgiving them, not for their sake, but for your sake, because you're understanding that you don't want to carry with that shit no more. And you're releasing yourself completely. For others of you, it's releasing um, the shame or the guilt of, putting up with certain things in relationships because 
in childhood, perhaps you felt like you weren't loved. Perhaps you felt like you weren't understood. Perhaps you felt like they wouldn't put the effort uh, to get to know you. And this could be even with parents, you know, the feeling of not being seen or the feeling of not being understood. And it's like through that healing, you're coming out with a higher version of yourself. And that version of yourself is beautiful because it's whole. And now that it's whole, you're understanding the power that you possess. You're understanding that what you want and what your heart desires is something that not only you want, but you understand it to be real and you understand it to be something that because you deserve that and be unapologetic about it. And then you go into your power. So there's a lot of alignments that are happening for you Capricorns right now, but know and understand that whatever it is you've been struggling with or you've been having difficulty with, you will overcome that. And once you're able to overcome that, it is no longer going to be an obstacle, not just in the physical world, but in your mind, because you're releasing that fear. You're letting go of what's kept you in the past, not being able to fully experience your full potential or your true happiness. And now I see you guys going into this energy of being empowered, of knowing what it is that you want, of being unapologetic about it. If I'm making people uncomfortable, oh, well, that's their issue, not mine. I see you guys walking and standing with power. And not only that, but healing completely to the point of not being scared to love again. Yes, Capricorn. Being able to love again. Powerful message here for Capricorns. All right. Now let's go with Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Oh my God, you guys. I don't know where you guys are located. By the way, comment below. Let me know where you guys watch me. I'm in California. And let me tell you, I live by the mountains, you guys. So these past two weeks, it's been like above 110. It's been ridiculous. Hot like the devil's, you know what? <laughs> All righty, let's see. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. By the way, you guys don't confuse this reading with the monthlies, okay? I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be working on July's monthlies. I just felt called towards giving you guys a video, which by the way, I have a video coming up for you guys. Whoops. A video uh, for spell work for protection and also another video of spell work to empower you guys. It is a protection spell, but also very powerful spell that brings you into your power and i feel like right now it is more than necessary those types of spell works of self-work and empowerment so i'm definitely going to be uploading that in the next coming days you guys stay tuned for that all right aquarius sudden raising venus here we go Oof. oof, oof, oof. hmm Okay, Aquarius, you guys are revisiting the past for sure. This could be Saturn's energy, you guys. But there is this revisiting of past traumas, this revisiting of things in the past where people let you down, where people hurt you. The feeling of a wish fulfillment not happening for you or feeling like, Maybe it's not in your destiny. Maybe you don't deserve it. Um, of th When things are going good, all of a sudden something happens and everything crumbles. But what they're showing me here with the temperance and the seven of swords, it's like you are not taking self-responsibility, Aquarius. Yep. Sorry to tell you guys. But there is this feeling of I'm frustrated Everything that I've ever wanted in my life, it's almost like it's happened, but it hasn't happened the way I've wanted to. 
or it didn't go the way I wanted and then it went south. Or I put so much effort and energy towards manifesting certain things in my life and it's like it, it always comes through halfway through but not fully. And what they're telling you here is there is a lack of you taking self-responsibility for the lack of focus that you've had in your life, Aquarius. Now, there is this refilling of your cup. When I hear this, especially when I see the three of swords here, it indicates to me the almost the understanding or becoming self-aware that no one else can make you happy but yourself. And it's like you're pouring this love or this passion, or this creativity, or this new journey, or this new path that you're going to be experiencing in the next coming weeks, something that you're going to be picking up on that perhaps you haven't done in the past that is going to bring a lot of joy and a lot of happiness to you. And by tuning into that, or by following that, or by pursuing that new endeavor, it's like you are giving so much love to yourself through creativity. And in doing this, it's almost like you start to manifest or you start to materialize some of the things you've always wanted to happen, but up until now you have not experienced. What I'm hearing for a lot of you guys is automatic writing. It is the 369, the 369 rule or the 369 um, process exercise manifestation technique. Um, what I'm hearing is using your power of visualization, will you be able to surprise yourself in getting yourself to align to what it is that your heart's biggest desire is and then you start to see everything unfold in a very positive aspect you start to experience a lot of happiness self-fulfillment and it's like the universe starts to echo back and you're being re-inspired you're being shown love and this could be love in a very um genuine and authentic way as an example if you are a very um, introvert Aquarius, for example, and you have a tendency of not really wanting to get so much attention. And all of a sudden you dye your hair a different color. You go to the store and everyone you come across are complimenting you. It's like, they're giving you love, even people you don't know. Um, and they're helping you raise your vibration. They're helping you raise your confidence. It's like you're feeling the love. Uh, if you're masculine, it could be that you wear a specific shirt and you go to the gas station and someone acknowledges that shirt. And maybe the shirt is not usually the type you usually wear. But what they're, what they're saying here is there is a renewed energy that is unfolding around you. But in doing that, there, there's also the necessity to, the necessity to take self-responsibility. Like stop telling yourself that you haven't experienced this or things haven't gone your way because you don't deserve it or because it's not in your cards or because it's not destined for you. You're the only one that decides what is destined for you or not. You are in control of your life. You are in control of your very near future. And it has a lot to do with how you decide to think and act right now that is going to be consequ consequentially the ending result of your very near future. So again, remember, automatic writing, 369 uh, method, uh, visualization exercises. I really want you guys to tune in to the law of attraction. If you guys don't understand or know or want to know anything about witchcraft, get into the law of attraction, get into visualization exercises, get into automatic writing, get into uh, anything that is going to help you shift your energy and focus using your mind so that you can really be blown away 
by training or reprogramming your mind to think like who you really are, a very powerful manifester. Only then are you going to be able to align yourself and really blow your mind, blow yourself away by the power that you possess, Aquarius. All right, now let's go to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of, well, for the remaining of June, going into July. Let's see what's going on. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. All right. Pisces, I see you guys going into this type of you're going into this cycle right now where you feel like you're being challenged. Um, for a lot of you guys, it's being challenged in the sense of rethinking, rearranging, or changing your mind. Um, so let me be more specific with that. For some of you guys, you've been hoping or wanting a deepening of a connection, a wanting to receive reciprocation from your partner or the person that you're dealing with, really wanting their full attention or, you know, their support, just being more loved. For others of you, you were at a situation where you got certain options and from those options, you came to the realization, well, you know what, where I'm at right now is not ideal. So maybe I should entertain the other options I have. Maybe I should, this could be work. This could be career wise. This could be something that you, like I said, you've been hoping for. And it can be in any aspect. It could be in relationships. It could be in your finances. It could be in your career, your profession. There's almost like this feeling of I have options now. And what I wanted at some point, where what I thought I really want it. Turns out I don't want it. And I want to see if there's better things out there. Be careful not to go through this ping pong, uh, ping pong type of energy. I feel like you guys are going to be struggling uh, in the next coming weeks, maybe even months, because it's Getting to the needy greedy of what it is that you really want and being clear and concise and focused. Focused enough to see the end result of that. And I feel like for some of you guys, there's options that are coming your way that may be very enticing or may be very tempting. But it's at the cost of letting go or forgiving yourself Owning the fact that everyone has the right to change the things that they want out of life at some point in your life. As an example, if at some point in your life you thought, you know what, I am doing great at work. I feel like I'm ready to take it to the next level in my relationship. And then you get in that relationship and you get to the point of feeling like, well, you know what, it's inconvenient for me right now because I'm really growing in my profession or in my career and it's taking up a lot of my time. And I can't really afford to put more time into my relationship because my business or my career is demanding too much of that. I feel like if you stop watering something, you're going to let it die. And then you're going to realize you do want that. So be careful for the next coming weeks when we're talking about options when we're talking about opportunities that present themselves because it's almost the feeling of like looking um and thinking that there is you know greener grass on the other side and then finding out that yeah it's greener because it's artificial because it's fake it's not real grass and then there's a feeling of wanting to backtrack and i feel that by back backtracking you're not learning your lesson so be careful in this asp. Also, I just remembered, 
Um, Neptune is going to be going retrograde. And I feel that that's why you guys are going to be in this feeling of confusion or this feeling of like changing your mind every 15 minutes. Try the best you can to be grounded, Pisces. Uh, make yourself a habit of running cleansing baths, you know, every like, an, as an example, every Sunday, just to keep you grounded, just to keep you cleansed, to keep you protected. Um, because I feel like for some of you guys, you may run off of illusions and then you risk that job that was paying all your bills or you risk that connection that could have turned into something long term or you risk that relationship that is stable, but you've grown accustomed to it and you wanted something exciting, but that exciting thing makes you let or leaves you feeling like they just used you. It's about rising above illusions it is about owning the decisions that we make and knowing clearly and concisely what it is that we want and you know what Pisces if you don't know what you want it's okay it's okay to not know what you want it's okay to have options the moment we give our word the moment we give or promise or that we're going to give loyalty or that we're going to give some type of that's when it gets muddy. That's when the, the waters get mercury, murky. That's when karma, you know what I mean? So be careful in that aspect, my lovelies. Try to remain as grounded as possible. And like I said, I would highly encourage you guys for the next coming two months uh, to try to make it a habit of at least cleansing yourself once a month. Um, you know, every third Sunday of the month, for example, to keep you grounded, to keep you protected, and to keep you cleansed. All right, my lovelies. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. If you did, definitely comment, like below. Let me know. Um, I want to wish you guys the very best. I hope you're feeling much better. I hope that we continue to believe in humanity and we try our best to be amazing people to other people because only through us changing and wanting to be better will we be able to experience that as well? And it starts with ourselves. So anyways, I wish you guys the very best and I'll see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye.